Greetings and welcome to a new video about MOSFET amplifiers. This is our second example. In this example, we will look at the source for our using the N channel E MOSFET or the enhancement type MOSFET. Of course, we will work out in the calculations everything step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at the circuit. This is the source follower circuit we will discuss. We have here the N channel E type MOSFET. And the values for the parameters for this MOSFET are shown here. If we have a threshold voltage of 2 volts, and the conduction parameter KN is 25 milliamp per square volts. We have a couple of resistors. We have the R1, R2, both are 1 mega ohms. And we have also the RS, which is here, the source resistor, and also the load, which is shown here. We also have the input uh, resistor or the output impedance or resistance of this uh, input voltage. Are in also the VDD, which is 15 volts for our DC. Okay, what we also have is the AC coupling, which is the C1 and C2. So the input is coupled to this circuit using the capacitor C1, and the load RL is coupled to this circuit using the capacitor C2. The values of those capacitors are such that we have the sufficient bandwidth and also what we have is the maximum available gain at that specific frequency for our input voltage. So we don't bother about the values of the C1 and C2. Okay, what we want is the calculation of the voltage gain, which is from the input all the way to the output, so V over VI. That's what we want. So let's look at our solutions. We start with the DC analysis and then after that, we will do the AC analysis and then complete the discussion, also your verification the SPI simulations. We first transform this circuit into DC analysis circuit, which is this one. That means the capacitor are perfectly open, so we lose the R in and the VI and also the load RL. So that's the circuit. Now we will determine the required values, which are the drain current or the source current. They are equal to each other because the gate current is zero. And we also will determine the VGS, which is the gate to source voltage. But we assume for our situation here, for this MOSFET, that this operating in the saturation region, which is also the linear region for the MOSFET terminology. And for that, we need to check these two conditions. That means the VGS must be large or equal to the threshold voltage, in this case, two volts. And the VDS, this voltage must be larger than or equal to the overdrive voltage or the VGS minus the threshold. So we need to check these two, but we assume first that this is the region and then we will check after that if this is correct or not. So first the voltage at node G, we can apply here the voltage divide rule since this input impedance is infinite. And then we can say the following thing, VG is equal to R2 or R1 plus R2 times VDD. Now, when we substitute the values here, we get 7.5 volts at this node VG. Okay. Now using Kirchhoff's voltage law at the input loop, this part, we can say VGG, I, I mean VG is equal to VGS, this voltage, plus the voltage across RS. So it is then IS times RS using Ohm's law. But we know the drain current using this uh, assumption of saturation region is given by this formula. So it is the square law formula. You see the Kn, the conduction parameter, and also the threshold. Since Id and Is are exact equal to each other, we can just use this Is in or use this Id in here. So we can combine them and make this expression. So just substitute the Id expression in here. We can now solve this because we can substitute now the values in here, and the only unknown here is the VGS because the threshold is known and also the KNRS, etc., are all known. Now we can solve this uh, using hand calculation. Okay, you can also use a solver for this uh, simplified expression, just using your graphing calculator or anything similar. Now we get two intersections. One of them is here, the left part, and the right part here, and that's actually shown here. So we have two screens for the intersections. And for one of the solutions is 1.722, volts, the other one is 2.264 volts. But which of these two will it, we will use for our future calculations? Now, if I look at the saturation region of operation conditions, VGS must be larger or equal to the threshold. That means 
This is smaller than a two volt, so that means it is an invalid solution. So mathematically correct, but not for this circuit practically possible. And this is larger than the threshold voltage of two volts, so this is the valid solution. So our actual VGS, the solution, is 2.264 volts. So we will use that. Now, and we will use that in a drain current expression here. And you can substitute the values here, you will get 1.745 milliamps. Okay. Next step is really checking this VDS condition here, if this is really true. So we can apply now here the Kirchhoff voltage law at the output loop. So we can set up VDD is equal to VDS plus the voltage across RS. Now we know the ID and IS, IES and ID are equal to each other. So we can rewrite this such that the VDS is expressed in the other parameters and we replace IS by ID. We know IS and we also know ID then. And we also know RS and also VDD. So if I now substitute the values here, you will get 9.765 volts. If this is larger than the value here, then we are also we also meet the second condition for the saturation region. So let's see that. Is that really true? Indeed, because this here is 0.264 volts only, and we have 9.765 volts, so definitely much larger, so definitely sufficient for the second case also. So this is also valid. So we have now checked the two conditions. Okay. Moving on, uh, let's check now the simulation result and specifically DC analysis. These are the two values we have determined. Let's see if this is really correct. This is the circuit. You can see the R1, R2, RS load, the RN and the VN, and also the MOSFET itself. And also we see the voltmeter here and also the voltmeter here for the gate to source voltage. We know that we had 2.264 volts. So you see that also here. You see also the gate uh, the drain current here and also the, the drain to source voltage. But in order to really get these values, you need to model this MOSFET. And for that, I will use the SPICE level one model, which is shown here. It's also called the Shishman Hodge model, very simple model for hand calculation, very suitable for hand calculation. We have two parameters we have used in this model, which is a threshold voltage of two, and also another parameter, which is called the beta here in the SPI simulator, but it's actually also KP called in other literature. So how is beta or KP related to that conduction parameter? That is given by this expression, which is KN is equal to KP over two times the W over L. W and O and L is the width and the length of our device. But default setting for the W in order to get this expression for the drain current is 10 to the power minus 5, so it's 10 micrometers. It's also for the length. So this ratio is just one. So in this case, we don't see the length or the width. We can just say this ratio is just one, so that will be just a simple multiplication by one. So the Kn must be then Kp over two. That means Kp is then two times the Kn. So whatever you have here, you need to put here the two times the value. That's why we have Kp is then two times the 0 0.025 or 25 milliamps per square volts. And then you get 50 milliamps per square volts. That's the reason for having here 50. That's the reason or the discussion for this case. Okay, now let's bring this and then move on to the AC analysis. Given in red here box is our model for this MOSFET enhancement channel and channel MOSFET enhancement type. You see the gate, that's this one, the drain, which is this, and also the source. Let's start with the drain. We know that for AC analysis, the DC sources are all turned off. So VDD must be then disabled. And this is a DC voltage source that must be then shorted. That's why we have a short here, which is also called the AC ground. We also see the source here, which is then uh, going to the RF, through RS the ground. You see also the capacitor C2 and also C1 is actually completely perfectly shorted. That's why we have an RS and RL in parallel here. So this is the parallel combination of these two resistors, which is shown here. And there we see that there is a IS is flowing. Looking at the gate, we see the R2 and also the R1 going to the ground from the gate. And that's why we have here the R1 and R2 parallel. 
Why is R1 going to ground? Because I'm going from the gate all the way to VDD. And since this is an AC ground, it's also effectively parallel to R2. Now, since C1 is perfectly shorted, that we have also the connection to R in and then the input voltage. So this is the complete small signal model for our AC analysis. Now, looking in here, we can see that we have an impedance, which is then called the ZIG, looking in the gate. That suggests the parallel combination of R1 and R2, or given here as this expression. When you substitute the values, each of them is one mega ohm, so we know it will be then the half, 500 kilo ohms. Okay, now we know we need this voltage gain. That can be also written as VG over VI times V over VG. What is VG? VG, VG is this voltage at this node. So VG over VI times VO over VI. That's the same thing. So why is this handy? Because a VG over VI is a very simple voltage division. So it is ZIG, this input impedance at gate, divided by the RN plus the ZIG. That's this expression. Now for the other one, going from the VG all the way to the output, we can say VO itself is this current times the resistor here in parallel. That's shown here. But this current IS is also this dependent current source, which is GM times VGS. And GM is the transconductance, we will calculate shortly. And VGS is this voltage. This expression is for the VO. But for the VG, we know from this all the way to ground is this voltage plus the voltage across the parallel combination of RS and RL, or VO. So we can say, to get taking this together, and also VO here, we can uh, take it from this expression, we have this expression in ratio. So VO or VG is GM VGS times the parallel combination of the RS and RL divided by this. Now, we can now divide out the VGS, because that is just everywhere. So we have now this expression. So we have now two equations for this and we can now multiply them. So then we get the following expression for the gain. AV is equal to this expression. You can see it is not an inverted part, so there is no minus sign, so we will have in-phase output signal. Okay, now first calculate the GM and also the other parameters we require. GM is given by this expression in this configuration. We know the ID, which is a DC drain current and also the KN is given for the conduction parameter for the MOSFET. Now let's substitute the values here. You will get now 13.21 millisiemens. So we have it and now also the parallel combination of the source resistor and the load. That's just 2 kilo ohms from 3 and the 6 kilo ohms in parallel. Now let's substitute everything we have. This is the, these are the values and if you now do the math here you will get 0 0.963. So you see in this case it is not inverted. But it's also not really a high gain, it is actually an attenuation. But the purpose of this circuit is not to multiply or uh, amplify with a high value, it is for a large input impedance. And that's why we have a very small gain, actually not a very large gain. So the purpose is not really amplification. Okay, so looking at the uh, simulation results, the transient uh, response here, and so really checking this gain. The blue one is our input voltage, which is given by this expression, and the red is our output. So it is in phase, you can see that, and the input is 10 millivolts peak with a 10 kilohertz signal. Okay, so it is 20 millivolts peak peak for our input. Now, looking at the maximum and the minimum values, you can get the peak peak value also of the output voltage, which is then 19.213 millivolts. So we can now calculate the peak peak output over the peak peak input voltage, that is just the gain. And if you now substitute the values here, you will get 0.961 as the value from the simulation. So from calculation we get 0.963, but from the simulation data we get 0.961. So it is very close to what we have calculated, so we can say there's a nice check and that the calculations are really correct. Right guys, this is for our source follower example using the N-channel enhancement type E-MOSFET. So we have seen the DC analysis, then the AC analysis, and we have verified these in the SPI simulations. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the previous videos, you can also see how we did the specific DC analysis for 
this MOSFET and also other transistor type, which is the BGT for this type of circuits. See you next time in another video. Take care.